So I was asked to talk on tools and technology. This is actually based off a grant. I've been with Merck now about two years, but we had a kind of climate change heat stress grant. Myself, when I was at AM and AgriLife, uh, same as David, but I collaborated with Florida and a few other groups, and so some of it stems from that. But I just want to go through some technologies that we use. I, I wasn't able to go through all of them since I had 25 minutes or so to get through them, but just some technologies that are being used on dairies for production purposes, but how we might be able to utilize these uh, to assess heat stress and dairy count. So these are all some of the different behaviors, and, and I know some of the talks today outlined a few of them, but some of the behavioral changes you'll see in animals, so reduced feed intake, reduced milk production, reduced uh, lying bouts, activity, uh, reproduction is a big one, pregnancy rates and conception rates all go down due to heat stress, and then increased is respiration rates, water intake, and open mouth panning and salivation. So these are all the switches that go on with an animal that we can actually measure all of these with technologies that we have on the farm. And so I'm going to go through a few of those technologies. So kind of the old school way, but still some methods that will correlate with these technologies to see if they're working correctly is using respiration rates or rectal temperatures. So if you look at uh, heat stress severity going from no stress to severe stress and respiration rates of less than 60 breaths per minute, uh, which would equal a rectal temperature of the body norm of a lactating dairy cow of 101.3, and then as the stress goes up, you can see that also the breast per minute obviously would increase and that rectal temperature would go up. And so the ways we will correlate some of these technologies to see if they're assessing heat stress correctly is by looking at the technology and then measuring breast per minute and rectal temperature and see if they all correlate. I know there was some papers or abstracts here that have done some of that with some um, other picture uh, things, but. These are all different ways. There's all kinds of technology out there uh, to measure count. I stole a few of these from Dr. Jeff Bewley at University of Kentucky, who looks at using this precision dairy technology to evaluate uh, different behavioral changes or different emissions from a cow. So methane emissions being one, feed intake, respiration rate, you can monitor fatness, um, temperature, mastitis, hoof health, mobility, all of these different things you actually can monitor on the animal through some type of technology that can be a, a strap to theirs. So I'm gonna go through a few of these technologies and, and see how they associate with uh, bo internal body temperature. So this is a big one that I've used uh, both when I'm with industry and when I was with Extension and Research in Texas and Arizona. Uh, this is the I button, so it's about the size of a dime and it will actually log time, temperature, and humidity. You can buy these for about $20 a piece. And you can put this on an intravaginal device. So this is a cedar device, uh, somewhat commonly used in the dairy industry to synchronize cows, but you can actually push this button inside there, tape it, or put some type of glue on it. Before you do that, you can download it to start um, picking off the time and temperature. You put it on the cedar device, stick it inside the vagina of the cow, let the cow walk around for a week on the dairy farm, and you can pull this out, download the data on the computer, and it will give you a time and temperature of, of where that cow has increased heat, and you can use that to identify where the cows are getting hot and how hot they're getting on your dairy farm. So these are about 20 bucks. Um, all the information on where to purchase these and how much they are and which one to get is all in the proceedings there as well. But this is a nice tool we've done to do a lot of heat stress audits on dairy farms to assess the severity of heat stress and where uh, heat stress is occurring. This is another device that does the same thing. It's, it's a little bit better to be used for research. It's called a hobo data logger. It's a little bit more accurate um, and you can actually tape it to the same wing of that cedar device and put it in the cow intravaginally and again it logs time, temperature, and humidity. This is a unique device from um, Europe that they actually use to to let a person know that the cow comes in heat. So when a cow shows estrus or uh, comes in heat for her cycle, temperature of the uterus will actually increase slightly. And so they put the same type of temperature devices uh, inside the cow and it will actually transmit and send a signal to the computer which will then send a text message to your cell phone to say, hey, this animal's in heat, go out there and breed this cow. This is yeah, so I thought it was pretty cool. They had a, uh, a news reporter came out from the city 
and did a story on this, and this was her headline, Cow's Lady Parts Text Farmer When It's Time for a Booty Call. So it was an interesting article, and you read through it, of how a lay person goes out there and, and tried to assess what these farmers were doing. But the, the reason I show this is because as technology comes in that we're using to uh, be able to catch a cow in the heat or something else, we can also have that send us a message, Dude, these are cows are getting heat stressed. Right? Their temperature is increasing above the normal. You need to go look to see where this cow is getting heat stress on your farm or why she's getting stressed. Another reason her temperature might be going up is due to fever or sickness. So it would be another reason you want to approach this cow. But it's all becoming automated uh, through these type of technologies. So this is how I used uh, this was a particular farm, dairy farm in Arizona, that came to me and said, hey, we're having some heat stress issues. Uh, can you do a heat stress audit? So I took that intravaginal uh, eye button device. We stuck it inside the cow. We let the cows walk around. We got six or seven of them. Let them walk around for a couple, three days. Pulled them out, downloaded the data. So this is vaginal temperature here in Celsius, and this is time across here. So we know the cow's temperature, we want to keep it down here to about 38.5. And if it gets above 102.2, we, we've seen through research that you get a reduction in fertility and a reduction in, in milk production starts occurring. So if you see here when I plotted these cows out, and this one particular cow I'm showing as an example, Every day they were getting hot around the same time. It was about 12 o'clock in the afternoon, 12.30 on, on these two particular days. So we went out to say, well, what's going on at 12, 12.30? Where's this cow out on the dairy farm? We'll come to find out the, the, the breeders were getting there late, they were locking these cows up, and they weren't releasing them quick enough, and they didn't have cooling over the headlocks where these cows were. So it allow us to have a conversation with the dairy farmer. Is there cooling we need to put above the headlocks, or can we get through the pens quicker, the breeders get there on time, so that we can get these cows unlocked and they can go lay down. So it allows you to troubleshoot hot spots on your dairy farm. So every farm has micro environments. There's spots on that farm that's hotter than the others, whether it be in a parlor or a holding pen or just the way the barns are aligned and how the sun comes in at different angles, etc. Airflow all has part of it. But these will allow you to assess where these cows are getting heat stress and, and implement some type of cooling if possible. I've also used it to uh, during them before they wanted to implement a cooling technology uh, and use this huge upfront investment and to see if it works. Um, in this particular case, we got a company to uh, put some fans and soaker lines called a flip fan system on the edge of a shade in an open dry lot dairy farm. Okay, and here's a shade that does not have that cooling system. And what we did was put some of these intravaginal temperature devices in, and this data is actually published. Um, John Smith published some of this. And you can see here the control group that didn't have fans or soakers, their core body temperatures ran higher uh, than, that, than the ones that had the flip fan device. So utilizing these devices as well uh, helped the dairyman to make a decision that, hey, was this cooling technology working? And if so, then maybe I should put it in on the rest of my farm. So you can also use it as a way to troubleshoot what technologies might work on your dairy. So the next couple of data sets uh, are from Dr. Jeff Buley. And so this was published in Journal of Dairy Science, where he looked, and you can put a smart bolus, is, is the name of this, put it in the reticular room in a, uh, of the animal. So it sits down in this animal here, and will actually log uh, a temperature every 15 minutes. And so they were utilizing this and ran it through an entire year. And I just show you what the temperature does inside of the cow, and obviously went up in the summer here compared to spring, fall, or even winter. And so you can slightly get uh, higher measurements in the rumen of the cow during seasonal ways. So it may be one way you can assess heat stress. The issue with this particular technology is what happens when the cow drinks water. Well, obviously that temperature shoots down. So they had to adjust for a lot of those, and so that makes it difficult doing something inside the rumen of a cow to measure temperature because every time she drinks water, that temperature goes all over the place. So probably not the best tool, but as they start dialing things in, and the way he did it was he, he came up with a, a way to um, do a calculation to take out that particular water piece uh, of it. So there may be ways down the road as they come up. And it's interesting, too, that a lot of these technologies actually came from Israel. And, and some of it was religion driven as far as there's particular days of the week they're not supposed to work and, and they utilize some of these technologies to keep it going. So I had a chance to stay in a kibbutz over there for a couple of weeks and, and see some of this stuff. So 
it was really uh, interesting to me. That was years ago. They had these technologies put in made it here in the U.S. Um, this is, just, I just show it as an example, a, a heat time tag. Uh, again, Dr. Jeff Buey looked at rumination time during the summer season and its relationship with metabolic conditions and milk production. So the way I understand this technology is, is some of this will actually measure the rumination or how many bites through kind of a, a voice type technology. So how many bites this animal's taking through her rumination. So uh, through chewing their cud, and then that will give you uh, some type of reading to tell you if that cow's ruminating properly. Well, they looked at this compared to the temperature humidity index. So that's the index that we utilize uh, Comparing temperature and humidity as that index goes up, these animals get hotter and more heat stressed, right? So we usually say above a 68 THI is when an animal becomes heat stressed. And you can see here they took these THIs all the way up to 90. And just the point I want to make is that rumination um, went down, trended down as temperature goes up. So another way that these technologies uh, can be used to assess um, heat stress, but in this case, utilizing the rumination. So that was a couple of things to assess on the behavior side. Uh, I'm sorry, on the internal core side of the animal. This is a few ways that we can look at animal behavior. And so there's a lot of activity monitor systems out there available today. Um, activity monitor systems are, are systems that are put in place and will pick up the activity of the cow. So when this animal comes into heat, she'll walk more. And so um, these are becoming somewhat more popular in the United States. Uh, to be able to check when a cow comes into heat, and that way we know when to AI her. So I just put a few of those up there. I'm sure there's more than, than what I've got. But they've used these as well uh, to assess how that might affect uh, during heat stress. And so these technologies are being used on the farm to do something production-wise, whether it's to assess feed efficiency like the smart bolus, or whether it's to assess the cows coming into heat, or whether to assess the cow lying down or standing up, but we, we use that for other things, right? And so I'm just encouraging them to look at other ways you can utilize the technology that you might already have installed. So here you can see that walking activity increased, obviously, during the cool parts of the season versus the warm. So an animal doesn't obviously want to uh, spend a lot of energy walking around in the summer. They'll stand up, but they don't want to walk around, okay? so. Um, this just shows utilizing these activity systems, you could measure uh, how severe heat stress is or which animals are becoming heat stressed due to the decrease in walking activity that they have. Uh, another one um, that's being utilized is lying bouts. So within some of these same activity systems, you have the opportunity to measure how often a cow lies down and how often she's standing up. So it's the same, the way I understand it, similar technology, you have a cell phone, you turn that phone sideways and the screen turns sideways with it, you turn it back up. Okay, so that same technology when placed on a cow's leg, obviously when she's laying down, that leg is placed a different way. That logs how often that cow lies down and how long she lies down for. So you can use that and what they were originally using it for, looking at resting times. We know resting times are very important on a dairy. And so we want to make sure cows are resting the appropriate amount of time. But when it comes to heat stress factor, cows want to stand up during heat stress. And so it's, a, it's an issue because that cow now is not lying down getting the proper rest. She's spending energy, energy standing up instead of making milk. And the reason she does that is she wants to get as much airflow across the surface of her body as possible to stay cool. And so that's why uh, possibly using these lying bouts, and they're using them in more and more research uh, opportunities, but looking at lying bouts and how they affect the cow during heat stress. So this is uh, with the core body temperature and they just looked at the animals that they had um, these line devices on and the cows that had the hotter temperatures internally, the hotter temperatures. So these cows average 103, almost 104 degrees internally compared to the cows that were lying down were now around normal of 101.9. Just showing that cows want to stand more in the summer and you can assess that degree of heat stress by looking at how often the cow is lying down or standing up. They, within this same study, they looked at the percent of animals standing um, uh, across different degrees of the temperature humidity index. So again, I said we use a, a threshold of about 68 THI, and above that is when animals start entering into some type of heat stress. And so as it got worse, the temperature humidity index 
the percent of animals standing increased, uh, as already discussed, and got up to 70% of the animals that had this on in the pen were actually standing and not lying down because of the increase in temperature. Interestingly, uh, is that after it got to a certain severe temperature, I think they just finally gave up. They said, well, I stand up or sit down, it's going to be hot, right? So they just decided to lay down. They're probably too tired. So that's the only way I can explain uh, why that is. But uh, again, it's just showing that using this lying technology, we can assess heat stress on the deers. I think this is really interesting. Uh, utilizing real-time location systems. So these systems I'm talking about, I'm talking about them as if they're separate systems, but actually a lot of these will have all of it in one. We'll have your, your activity system, your lying bouts, your rumination, all of this in one, one thing. So you will get all this data in one, one swipe. But here's one where they use real-time location systems, kind of a similar technology that they attach to cargo shipment containers or it's, it's a little different, but somewhat similar to the GPS that you'll have in your phone. But you can actually identify exactly where on a dairy your cow is located. Now, why is this important? It's important for a couple things. Uh, in, in South America, it, they utilize it to, when cows disappear off their farm. And they know that somebody is wrangling their animals and they need to go find them. But, um, you know, for us, in a heat stress situation, if I'm utilizing this technology and I say, okay, I see the cows uh, standing up more and the internal temperature is getting hotter and she is in this part of the barn and most of my cows are spiking in these two pens or most of them are spiking their internal temperatures in the parlor or the holding pen, but it allows me to assess where this animal is at on the dairy farm and then, then you can go in and start uh, assessing how you can cool that area. So every farm has those micro environments it gets hotter than others that I just mentioned earlier. So with this type of GPS technology, we can assess exactly where that cow is when she's starting to get that heat stress. So I think it's pretty neat. I mean, it gets it down to even, you can't see it back there, there's little green dots showing this cow's laying in a free stall or not. So it's, it's very accurate within feet uh, of where it's located. So how would I use all of this? Um, you know, I, I think about it personally uh, just because I work a lot in the animal health world, and obviously for a pharmaceutical company, we're always talking about animal health, and we talk about subclinical disease, or if we can identify subclinical mastitis or subclinical endometritis, then I can step in and do some type of something to circumvent a clinical disease. Well, I think about it the same way when I'm using this technology. So in the summer, you know, rumination goes down and, and activity goes down. Right, and you'll also have the core temperature of that animal starts going up. Well, I want to know is exactly when is this occurring, so I can come in and he's using the subclinical as example before we get to this hot heat stress area. Where are these animals? When do they start becoming heat stress? At what temperature? And then start my cooling systems at that time, which would hopefully save save me some money possibly, but prevent this huge spike. And, 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 and heat stress. You know, how severe is the heat stress is the other way you can look at it. So when should I start cooling? When should I stop cooling? That's just as important. Some people want to turn the cooling systems off. So cows are comfortable at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We're comfortable at 70. So a lot of times a lot of farmers go out and say, man, it's cool out. Cut the cooling off. But a cow is not. A cow a lot of times is still heat stressed at 70 degrees because that's 30 degrees out of her thermal neutral zone. So you can assess why they got heat stress, and then with that real location technology, you can assess where on the farm they got heat stress. Maybe there's parts of your farm that needs cooling, and parts that doesn't. So that's how I would use all of this technology to try to circumvent um, these animals being way out of their thermal neutral zone. A um, couple other technologies. Uh, heat stress apps, can't go through them all. They're, and it's all in your proceedings. This is three of them. I think there's a fourth one that came about since I put this together a year ago. But uh, there's three different heat stress apps you can download. I believe they're all free right now uh, through your iPhone. Um, the one I'm most familiar with, uh, come out of the University of Missouri, uh, Dr. Don Spires created it. It's called Thermal Aid. Um, and it will allow you to look. It grabs basically a weather reading from whatever local weather station is closest to your farm and then we'll calculate the temperature humidity index. You gotta go through a few prompts. You say, okay, it's a dairy farm and these are high producing cows and boom. And then it calculates the temperature humidity index. So you don't have to look at 
you know, find uh, this index to see. You can just pull it up on your phone and say yes. And it will actually change the background. The hotter it gets, the background changes from normal to alert to danger to emergency. You can do beep and dairy. It will also allow you to measure breaths per minute. So you can click on a little thing and it'll, you can start counting the cow's breathing and then it'll calculate breaths per minute for you. And it will also um, give you tips. Okay, so if it says, okay, you're alert, it's danger, it's hot, here's some things you can do. So I um, encourage you to check out this app if you have any anything you want to do with it. It's, it's free. Lastly, I'm going to go through utilizing farm data to assess the severity of heat stress. Before I did the, left the university, and again, I stole this idea from Israel. Um, I was over there with the extension agent in Israel, and he was using this as a tool to come to his dairyman and show them how they can evaluate heat stress on their farm and then compare it to other people's farm in their region using their own data. And so he would make a ratio called the summer to winter ratio and he would evaluate it within herd and the cross herd. So as an example, and you can do this with milk production or conception rate, but basically take your two or three best winter months, okay, I'm using the January, February, March as our best conception rate months for lactating dairy cows, and let's say the average 40% across those months. Then you can take the summer, your three worst months, okay, and get an average for that. And then just make this ratio, so 20 divided by 40. So basically you're saying I lost 50% of my conception rate going from winter to summer. Okay? So the best time of the year to the worst time of the year. And some dairies that might be a little bit smaller, and some dairies that might even be bigger. I've seen 75% losses, I've seen 0% losses. But you can do a quick calculation using your own data on your farm to see how bad of a summer winter ratio, how much are you losing going from winter to summer to assess the degree of heat stress. And the nice thing is if you're in a peer group or if you have a region, um, I went out and got uh, DHIA data and I collected DHIA data across the United States from about 800 different farms. And I separated it from the north to the south. Obviously there's a big difference there. So I, I ruled out, I just drew a line across the United States, said north, south, and I wanted to look at the top 10% of my dairies versus my bottom 10%. So how, how good are the good guys doing and how bad are the bad guys doing, okay? So we took that, there was about 40 herds in each in the north and 18 herds in each in the south, and did a summer to winter ratio, and you can see the top guys were hardly losing anything, and if anything, we're probably getting a little cold stress. I'm guessing, and that's why the winter number is lower, but your bottom guys were losing 50%. So I could use this as a tool. Where do you fall, okay, in this, in this right? And am I the guy in the top 10% or am I the guy in the bottom 10%? And this helps during the show because I, I get it all the time, especially I live in Texas, working with those guys and they're complacent to the fact that, listen, this is what we lose every year. But if I can show them their neighbor down the road doesn't lose that much and does a lot better, Boy, that's an eye opener. They're more, they're, it's a game changer, right? We're all competitive. In the South, top 10% versus bottom 10%. Yeah, there are some people hardly losing anything in the South. Okay, I mean, most of these herds were in Texas. Bottom 10% were losing 75% going from winter to summer in their conception rates. So a big difference. So I think this is a useful, it's not a science, super scientific tool. I know every dairy is different, but if you're in a group or can get in your 10 farms or you know, DHI records, you can help show, um, you know, how do I get the bottom guys to the top, or where do you fall in these categories? I also did that, um, got a couple minutes left. So then I went ahead and took these dairies off all the pregnancy rates in the southwest, and I said, all right, I want to use the top guys and the bottom guys, and I'm going to do it for preg rate, conception rate, and milk production. And when I did the summer to winter ratio, the top guys lost 33% of their preg rate, and the bottom guys lost 78% in their preg rate going from winter to summer. Again, just looking at the herds in the south. Okay? If you look at conception rate, it lost 24%. The bottom guys lost 62%. And in milk production, the top guys only lost 4%. And the bottom guys lost 16%. So a couple of take-home messages. One, there's still a lot of room for improvement for these guys to get up to here. Okay, assuming these guys are doing his best, right? But look at the disconnect between milk and, and reproduction. Because I'll hear a lot of times when I get up in the Midwest and Northeast, I'm talking about heat stress, they say, I don't get heat stress. 
right? I hardly lose any milk in the summer. I lose very little. Well, look at your reproduction though, because your reproduction is going to be the first thing to go. And it usually goes at an earlier temperature than your milk production. It's just much harder to measure. So all of our research is all focusing on how milk production is, with good reason, because it's easy to measure. Reproduction is much harder to measure. But you, you, this just shows the disconnect. Repro gets tanked by, you know, 20 to 60 percent, whereas milk production may hold decently well because we genetically bred these cows to produce milk. So that's what they're going to do. But I think this is an easy tool that either extension or peer groups or however you could possibly implement and kind of look uh, across farms at how good or bad you're doing. So um, I'll, I'll leave it for, I've got a minute left. This is just the take home from the precision technology. There is technology available to assess these heat stress. There's apps available. And there's just easy to use tools uh, using your own farm data. Like. So with that, we have to answer any questions.